Today's guest, my good friend and business partner, Reese Wabara. In this episode, we answer and discuss some of your questions regarding investing, e-commerce, and a millionaire mindset. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy. The bigger the party, the bigger the guest. Well, the Dynamite duo is back, uh, <laughs> back on the podcast. All good. How are we doing? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good. Good, man. Good. What's new? A lot. A lot. New whips. Yeah, true. Eurus. So, got, so uh, everyone listening, I've got um, Lamborghini Eurus with... Um, a body kit. Yanni replied to the store and he said, oh, I own that company. And I was like, yeah, I know. I've heard of it. The full shebang. TV's the lot. Yeah, so it's got t- TV's in the back. Uh, still got the Rolls Royce. Still got the Lamborghini Aventador. But I'm going to sell both because in England, you don't need two cars. No, no. Keep the roof. Keep the roof. Clubs in the back and stuff. So just keep that a bit closer to you. So, what, so go on in. Let's talk us through um, these econ problems you've been having. We'll just get straight to business. We don't want to waste people's time. Um, yeah. Shipping struggle. Yeah, just in um, the last last few months, every every Monday just I wake up, I wake up um, to an email saying um, this shipment's been held, this container's been held, no real reason to be honest. But obviously that will naturally um, affect growth because the stock's not there. So up until end of March, 120 30 percent growth rate, and then um, April, sorry, the end of March release, which moves into April that release was compromised because obviously the container has been held. Right. So we kind of made a, a middle uh, of the month release just to uh, compensate for any delays. So effectively, you know, we've got end of March, middle of April, end of April. So basically dropping new products on every 14 days, which will be smaller releases than the big one. But yeah, I mean, everything just keeps getting moved on and moved on. And releases are fragmented. And um, it's funny because some of our friends were texting saying, oh, it looks really good. And I'm like, that's 70% of the stock's not mm-hmm. there. And of course it's, you know, we're still up year on year, but it's a bit frustrating, but I think it's the same for everybody. Um, no real explanation why from HMRC. Um, I've had a few people who own businesses say they're in a similar pr- predicament. So look, this is just business. It's, that stuff happens all the time. It's frustrating, but so what's your what's your plan moving forward to try and to try and mitigate that? I know, I know it's really hard because you can't do anything. It's in the government's mm. hands, right? So moving forward, I'm assuming I had a, I spoke to someone earlier actually, and I was explaining to him the, the, the similar situation that everyone's moving online. Everyone wants shipping containers. Every man and their dog is trying to ship things. So like moving forward, there's probably going to be a backlog mm. even further than you think. So is there any type of plan? Maybe more air. Yeah, of course you can do that, but yeah, it's more costs. Yeah. So um, it's a balance, and, and that was the, obviously the first port of call. Okay, you know, going into winter, how do we ensure that this situation doesn't occur? It, it may, you know, it, the, the ports may clear up. And obviously, there's Brexit, which is also slowing down things. So things may um, clear up, but who knows? And that was my first thing: how do I la- limit the risk? But as you said, then the only way to limit that risk is to send stuff via air. But mm. if we're talking summer stuff, it's like you can afford to, you know, absorb the cost or add a little bit onto the retail price. But when we're talking outwear, and and this is what also I think many people don't understand is that a lot of people talk about COVID accelerating online businesses, but it's also accelerated costs everywhere. So yes, revenue may be growing for a lot of businesses, but margins again at mm. left, right and center, shipping to customers, shipping into the country. So if we're talking about outwear in this instance, if you was to air a, you know, a, a two, 1.5 two kilogram coat previously it may cost six seven pound that's 15 pound now so how do you absorb 15 pound into your cost price unfortunately that may get passed on to the customer or you're just working on really small margins mm-hmm. which also is counterproductive so there's no real obvious solution you can do a part air so you can you know air 20 percent of the stock but my biggest concern is i just want all the stock here um i want to spend as much money as we physically can to get the stock in the country we may have overstock but at least you've got options and you've got the stock in the door you can decide what you do with it you, you can push harder on marketing worst case scenario you put it in a sale if you're overstock but i just want to get the stock here early so to answer your question there's no real solution you have to yeah. pay the cost have uh, have smaller margin um or take your chances and get it in by c on a decent margin um, and try and get it all in in one hit. I actually had um, a quantities meeting about um, uh, outwear uh, on Wednesday, um, actually, for both men's and women's wear. And normally we would buy like 16 weeks cover. And then obviously we get the sales data from the first week and then we can get a bit of uh, an understanding of what the rate of sale per week is going to be and then make a restock accordingly mm. to, you know, f- figure out uh, the stock for the next 
weeks after it runs out of stock. But I said, look, we just need to buy 20 weeks of cover, which is for eight, 12, 16, five months worth. So stock lands in September and it sells till January, February, do you know what I mean? And then yeah. hopefully the season switch, which is a bit more risky because you're obviously holding more stock. But if you get 16 weeks cover um, and, there's, uh, and there's delays uh, and you can't get the restocks in, you've missed the selling window. So I'm just like, get it in the door. I'm talking to my finance team. Just make sure you can get it in. I know it's going to uh, cost more. I know the warehouse is going to be bamboozled, but that's just a problem we've got to deal with. Just get the stock first. How big is the new warehouse? Recently moved in, right? Uh, last year? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 60,000 square feet. Okay. Um, but it's already full. So it, we're talking rack now because before it was boxes on the deck. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, fully it's rack now. And we just had um, some high bay racking delivered this week, right. actually. So that's all getting filled now. But... Even still, it's not going to be enough space. For no. I think it's like uh, you know nearly hundred thousand units of just pure coats, let alone all of the the other fashion lines. Yeah. So, again, these are just problems that you've got to got to deal with. But number one priority, just get the stock in the country mm. and, and, and find solutions for everything else. Yeah, it's, isn't it crazy when you when you're a growing company? Like you think you move into a place. It's it's like moving. You move into it. You put a few boxes in. You think, nah. If I outgrow this, I've seriously, I'm gonna make it. And then you outgrow it within like half the time you expect to outgrow it. But those things are good problems, right? It's one of them things for everyone listening. If you want to get a warehouse, then just get the warehouse. If you end up outgrowing it and you have to, you know, sublease it out or you have to just leave it, then you've already outgrown it. The turnovers there, the, the margins are there, so it's fine, right? Well, yeah, you know just as well as I. And it's, it's it's a good problem to have, but it's annoying. It's yeah. A bit of inefficiency and cost, but is what it is and, and unfortunately planning a warehouse is one of the most difficult things you can do because you can say okay in four years time we're going to be this big let's get a warehouse that can we can grow mm. into but what if you don't you've got to pay for all that cost all that business rates um and it hits your bottom line straight away so it's an impossible thing and i think the best thing you can do is probably you know plan two and a half years ahead yeah and if you grow faster than you do yeah you just sublease it uh, I know it's, it's such a shame as well because obviously most of uh, the leases are like five year leases, three year break clause, some are even longer now, right? Ten, ten and five. And how looking. can you, Econ, I think that those things don't marry up, which is a shame because you've got, you want to, Econ moves so fast. You're looking at like people can start companies and they go 400%, 1,000% mm. the first year, 400% the second year. They're outgrowing things too fast. So mm. like the building game kind of needs to marry up to it. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's an opportunity for someone listening. Maybe, maybe, maybe for you. Maybe for you me. Know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just get um, shorter term leases. Because even even the one we signed, um, they wanted ten years. I was like, absolutely no chance. Mm. Absolutely no chance. Five years. I want a break. There's no break. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And and that's just that's just how it goes, I guess. Well, this leads us on. Let's go. Let's let, let's drop a few questions in because I know everyone wants to always ask you questions, and no one gets a chance to actually answer, answer and ask. So let's let let let's fire some questions in. And we can we can go based. We can build it around this. So. One on Twitter from Flexus Flexus Lex Ecom Basics. I live and die by product. I think um, without a product, you can have the best structure, you can have the best marketing, you can have you can have everything mm. boxed off. But if your product's like lost, uh, then so will your sales. Um, I think the the fundamental before anyone starts e commerce, they need to offer a product which is unattainable elsewhere. Um, if you're offering a me too product, you get me too results. Um, so first of all understand what you're offering make sure you can't find it elsewhere and focus on that secondly of course marketing is uh, equally as important as product you can have a great product and no marketing and nobody knows you've got a great product so um, those two work hand in hand but you've got to start a product first and then as I said make sure you build your perception of your brand make sure you get it in the right people's faces um, and spend as much money as you possibly can afford to making sure that you have a positive return um, and putting it in, in people's faces and then I guess they're all closely linked to be fair but then logistics of course you don't want to have a great product get it in people's faces but can't deliver so then you've got to make sure you get the product to the customer on time um, and, and live by your word if you say it's next day make sure it's next day um, and then lastly is, is the team structure how are you going to grow how are you going to have your great product get it in people's faces deliver and if you do all those things you're going to grow as a business no doubt so then how do you cope with that we just talked about warehouse do you have enough warehouse space do you have enough senior intelligent critical thinking people within your business which can help you make key decisions so yeah in short your product must be unique and exceptional your marketing must you know um give value to your product show it in its best light uh, number three make sure you get it there on time those are probably the main basics those three really the other the other thing is a little bit more advanced yeah true yeah and those are the three things your product your marketing and yeah. getting it there on time yeah. 
obviously customer service rolls into that within the within the latter. Exactly. Another question. Oh, this has not been asked by anyone. We're going to throw it out to you. What is the at what, at what point does someone's hustle become a business? How do they transfer from a hustler to a business? And when I say hustler, I'm talking like someone that just has a little dropshipping company, right? Mm. Sells a few products online. You know, they're at around a sub 100 grand a year turnover. How do they change that into a business? We you, see it all the time. You can answer that question and I'll answer it a second because we've both done it. Yeah, to, to, to me, I think people straight away are just thinking too, thinking too small. The, in, in, the first things first, they 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 get a few sales, they don't start to employ, and they just leave it uh, uh, like just plodding on for too long. If you're making sales and you can get to 100 grand a year quickly, then you, then you're onto something that people people like. Whether you can take it to you know a million, ten million, twenty million, that's all that's all up to you. <clears throat> but I think people, um, I think from my point of view, yeah, people just they just don't think big enough and they don't think they're capable of doing that. But that is how every single business starts. Yeah. They start with just trickling in turnover. You don't hit the ground running and all, the, all of a sudden you've got a million, 200 million turnover. It doesn't doesn't happen like that. So just think bigger. And if, you, if you're making those type of sales, they can lead on to, to much more. There's a turning point though, isn't there? Because I seen you start from the ground up and I'm sure from day one, you didn't think this gym shot is going to be worth a billion pound. No, no. But there's a turning point where yeah. that something clicks. It's moment, you know? I think it's probably momentum. Yeah, momentum. You can see your sales ramping. You can yeah. see, and it starts to take up a lot more of your time. Yeah, based on that, I'd say momentum, and it drags you in, and it takes all your time. And when that starts to happen, you are seriously on. So, if a company can, again, hard to explain um, because some people time waste, right? They mm. they get dragged into a company wasting time on things mm. they don't really need to. But I don't know. I guess it's momentum. It's hard for me to explain that. Yeah, I mean, I guess from my perspective, it was a hobby at first, as you know, and some may know, it was simultaneous with football. It was just like, okay, I like clothes, let's make some clothes and use, you know, the the contacts I had or social media, which was in its infancy and there was a high return and let's see how far it goes. And I think um, I think I maybe had this conversation with you or somebody else and then you hit almost a million turnover in your first year and then you speak to people who are more senior and they're like, Jesus Christ, like, mm. that's not normal. Mm. And I guess mo both of us were living in a, a bubble because Gymshot was growing fast, MDV was growing fast and this was just our reality. But in the real world of business, that was unheard of. And I think until I or you spoke to people of more senior, they would come on to us and say, you, you, you're doing an amazing job. How have you done that? And you're like, I don't know, we just, just <laughs> did it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think at that point when I was speaking to more senior people, I was like, okay, I need to take this really serious. Um, and, then, and then I was like, okay, well, how do I grow from one mil to 10 mil to 20 mil to 50 mil, whatever it is. And, you know, I think in the early days, you do overcomplicate things. You do think it has to be more high level. You need all these senior people True. to go, but you don't, you know, you, as I said, you just need to focus on the fundamentals of business, uh, having that product, having a lot of it and putting it in the right places and everything else comes secondary and, and you find the answers to that. And I think a lot of people think we need this board, we need this team and they've got a product which it doesn't matter what you've got you could have a rocket ship attached to it it's not going anywhere do you know what I mean so I think you've got to understand first of all the momentum is this business growing fast um, and then don't get sidetracked from your fundamentals of what made it grow in the first place that could be a simple uh, solution is just add more units to the product which is flying yeah. I think people think we need to diversify our product range we need to go into new markets we need to add have a bigger product of, uh, product offering and you don't half the time you just need to understand what your consumer wants understand what's selling offer more volume of it and then slowly build as well and um you know, the, the staff at MDV hasn't grown um, other than the warehouse, of course, but in the head office, has the units haven't, uh, sorry, the people size hasn't really increased for three or four years. And that was four, uh, four years ago, it might have been five million turnover, and now it could be 50 mil turnover. Mm. And that goes, as the, the same mentality applies with people. You don't need more people, you need better people. You need people who can critically think and grow. Um, and I, and ha hiring is also the hardest thing in the world. And, and I think that's a mentality of, uh, the generation we live in now, everyone thinks more, 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 more is better. But no, it's like quality is so rare and scarce that, you know, people who can think, people who are curious and have the desire to grow um, are, are valuable more than 100 individual mm. people. One person can do 100 people's jobs, literally, just by thinking yeah. um, and asking themselves the right questions. Especially with the development of apps and stuff, right? It's getting even easier. You can you can take people's jobs away just from apps, from the Shopify apps. They're, they're incredible. Yeah, 100%. And that's... 
a good point to be fair because the only time the, everything that can be done um, by a computer will replace human jobs mm. the only thing a computer can't do which is human can do is see the future effectively a computer can't and show do emotion that. yeah and show emotion and empathy a computer can't do that the computer can't say okay in 10 years I can see the world going like that as I've said to you for years your skill is that you can see patterns emerging and see how the future will look and make bets based on that and, and that's obviously why you're one of the richest persons mm. in, in in the country um, but a computer can never do that they can spot algorithms of data in the moment they can execute m mundane tasks but they can't think and critically think and forward think yeah. okay this one's from uh, FPL Magician and he says the best books you've read I read too many at the moment yeah okay well what's your most recent let's say because I know you've you've answered the, the best books you've read before what about your most recent books or any that have you know changed the way you think a little bit in certain ways um, I'm, I'm reading at the moment which is his incredible full stop is the almanac of Naval Ravikant um, his way of thinking is just incredible is in the Naval on Twitter correct right. yeah he can take really really complex theories and summarise them in a in hundred words and yep. you just get it um, so that's an incredible book about all aspects of it, it's just you know making money working hard and he's got a, a quote that says it's not how hard you work it's where you work hard and that's absolutely true and as you mentioned earlier yeah, there's a lot of people who just got businesses they're working their ass off granted but in the wrong wrong field yeah. it's not going anywhere you can be the hardest working in the world and you just won't grow and there's some people who work in a field of perfect timing they don't seem to work that hard but mm -hmm. they're growing so that's a, a really good book. Um, another book I've read recently. Uh, you know what? I read the same books over and over again. Uh, I read Perennial Seller by Ryan Holiday again. That book's based off product and why some products are timeless and last the test of time um, and, some, uh, and why some products don't. And he kind of breaks down what goes into each of those things to make them last. And he talks about books that have been around for 100, 200 years. He talks about the product which have been around 102 years and, and how that looks like. So that's a good book. And lastly, what have I read? Again, Robert, everything Robert Greene. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got 48 Laws, Laws of Human Nature, um, Strategies of War. And yeah, he's a modern day genius, there's no doubt. I think he's very underrated. And as time goes by, I think his books will last probably, you know, centuries. Yeah, talk about your, when you're, re when you're reading the book, your strategy to actually getting the content from the book into your head to stick because you've got a certain strategy you use, right? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, obviously reading, I used to read books in, is in terms of paper books, now I use digital because you can highlight much easier and simple mm. and I'm using Kindle app or the books app. You can then just click on your highlights section and have them all summarised. Um, sometimes, depending on if it's the first time I've read or if it's a really complex book because some books are really hard to take in. Right. There's a... On Kindle, you can do a thing called Whisper Sync. So you buy the Audible book, you buy the digital book, yep. and it kind of reads. You watching the screen and it's reading um, simultaneously. Oh, so good. then you're taking him with your eyes, reading. Yeah. You're taking him with your ears, and then obviously you can highlight as well. So that naturally like stimulates all senses, and you can take it in, which is pretty good. And then again, just rereading your highlights, and then taking notes on those highlights, and 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 first of or making actions from those highlights. You can read, highlight, listen all you want, but if there's no actions from it, you're in limbo, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, But it, it's not an easy thing regardless. I mean, I was probably started reading when I was 23, I'm 29 now, and I think you can overload yourself with information. And There's a lot of contradictory theories as well, so you need to kind of test, learn, and find what works for you in your business or you in your life, do you know what I mean? So it's not easy, and as time goes on, you kind of connect those dots and understand what to kind of information to throw away and what to take in and um, but that comes with experience and that's why you know experienced people often get paid more because they know what's important and valuable mm. and what's can be discarded yeah audio audio books are great too right if you like podcasts then you just like an audio book it's exactly the same thing obviously then the other guys don't reply back but similar concepts yeah because you, you listen to audio books don't yeah you? I just listen to audio books mainly, mainly, I mainly listen to podcasts yeah, of yeah. people and my, I'm addicted at the moment to the stock market and everything to do with the stock market when as soon as the stock market opens 2.30 I'm there I'm watching people I've got like five different screens up and all of them are like saying what they think on today's stock market, even though it doesn't really matter what happens in today's stock market. But uh -huh. I just like to immerse myself 
stuff in that world for a bit. You know what I'm like, I get addicted to something for a bit and then I leave it alone for a bit. Then I get addicted to it again and, and I'll just keep going in and out of stages. But everyone's different. Like you wouldn't read a physical book, yeah. right? But you will listen to audio books or podcasts yeah. or news obsessively. Yeah. I'm the complete opposite where I like to sit in silence and take it in. And everyone's different. And as I said, you need to understand what works for mm. you. Um, and yeah, you are an obsessive personality, but again, curiosity and obsession is what leads to connecting dots. You have to be obsessed with it. But 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 what kind of gets to me as well is people happily sit there and read all the time, and, and, and but they don't ever put anything into action. So is there a way people can put these things that they're they're, they're reading and seeing into action? Because it's it's becoming an obsessive thing part of the internet that everyone wants to consume content, but then no one, everyone still wants more, but no one wants to do any action with it. Yeah, I think it's because people see, okay, successful people read, so I need to read, right? Um, but the, the people who are reading and are successful, they also have, a, as I said then, an obsession and curiosity, and they want to kind of enhance that. So, yeah. for example, I love fashion, obviously. Um, I will read as many books on fashion or business, I love business too, to improve my natural curiosity of business and fashion to enhance it. Some people don't have a natural passion or understand, but they say, I've seen Lewis or Reese do that, so I'm going to do that. Of course, there's not going to be an action from it because we're digesting it with a purpose to improve our natural uh, passion, do you understand? So I think that's what people need to do first. Find out what makes you tick, find out what you want to do, then seek the content to make you improve on mm. that, not the other way around. Otherwise, you've read hundreds of books and you know you can quote the books, but you've got no uh, action in your in your life and... Uh, it always comes with your natural calling. What makes you, when you get out of bed every day, what's making you tick, what's making you get up every day and go hard? Because um, if it's just money, once the money comes, you're not doing that anymore. Mm. Um, we both have money, but we both get out of bed at the same time as if we didn't. We live the first day like it's our last and last like it's our first. So there has to be something underlying of that which, which continues to make you do that. And that's what I think people need to do. Yeah. Forget the reading. What's going to get you out of bed? Great. Mm. Then read. And yeah. taking content from it, whether that's YouTube, podcast, whatever it is. Now, to me, to me now, it's, as I get older, it's, get, it's getting the, like the anxiety level is mm. of, of. It sounds funny, but potentially dying. Let's say he's getting mm. worse. I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to. Heights are getting worse. Don't want to go. You know what I mean? Heights are getting worse. I'm like, nah, I don't want to do that. Nah, I don't want to do that. Because the reality is, like, as you get older, you get more fearful of death because you've only kind of got one life, let's say, right? So so for me, as that's what's every, every, every day I'm thinking, like, I need to get up because, like, if I'm in a point in my life where I, I get some a, a big problem, right, let's say, like a disease like cancer or something, I'm going to be sat there thinking, why did I not do more back mm. then? I can't stop thinking of that. I'm so, so so that's given me that extra mm. bit of energy at the moment, which, which is great. And everybody's got different sources of energy. That's, for example, yours, yeah. a fear of death for argument's sake, which most humans yeah. have to. Um, and everyone it wasn't. Had, it's getting worse now. Though. Yeah, and, everyone, <laughs> so and, and I, have, older. I have a similar uh, approach to that. Mine's like a fear of living average. So right. I don't want to be 17 thinking, I've lived all these years and I haven't really achieved anything great. So... Uh, on my side it's like okay I want to show people what can be done without doing the corporate structure without having large amount of investment or you know I want to show people you can do it you've got to you've got to outwork outthink out everything to, to, in order to do it um, some people's motivation is just people hating on them and they want to silence them I have an element of that too mm. I also know they don't matter to me but everybody gets that feeling and some you know someone could tweet you or tweet me or something and you're like you don't really care but you still you still read yeah, it and yeah. you still feel it and you just want to shut them up, and it's a, it's a, it's a game, and it's childish. I don't bite on Twitter. You bite too much. I used to. I don't know. I used to. I used to. But it's still a it's still a motivation for me, and I kind of reverse engineer. I'm like, I know this means nothing, but I'm still going to silence you just because I know that fuels me. It's a, it's a, it's a petty thing. Yeah. I know it is, yeah. but it is, and um, everyone must must understand what fuels them. It could be you've got four kids, five kids, and you've got family to feed. That can be, you, you get out. Even in as far as staff, everybody's motivations are completely mm. different. Some people don't care about money. They just want responsibility. Some people don't. Some people just want to earn as much as they can. You need to understand what makes people tick. And yeah. it's not hard, but that's been, a, you know, as you said about computers, computer can't do that. Yeah. Computer can't read you and tell you what makes you tick. Mm. Um, that's, a, that's a great skill as any leader should have. And, and, and sometimes it's, it's difficult to see some people say one thing and do another. Mm. Some people will say to me or you, Lewis, I want to I wanna earn. I want to be like you, Lewis. I want to be super rich. I want to be clever. I want to be do this. And you, you'll say to them, I don't know what you're like. You'll be like, okay, well, you need to do this, 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 and this. 
but I don't want to do that. Mm. Well, you're never going to be me, so don't stop saying you want X, Y, and Z, but you don't want to do yeah. what it takes because it takes a lot. Yeah, back in the day, it was sacrifice. Every, to build, I was thinking about it earlier, and I was thinking to build a, a company that's been, like a unicorn company, for example, it's been, it's, it, it, it goes beyond just creating a normal company. It, it goes, it, it's like you suck, imagine sucking everything that you have out of your body and f- ejecting it into a company. That's what, building a unicorn company kind of looks like for the first like couple of, couple of years everything you solely have just goes into it you, and i mean i don't think everyone wants that especially at this age not now not now yeah and that's that's the thing i mean people have no idea what it takes and again when a business is growing it looks like it's easy right. but the, the amount of firefights you have to well the fires you have to put out the amount of plates you have to spin simultaneously and look you've got in there yeah 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 of course and looks looks a huge thing but looks run, runs out you know you yeah. might have a bit of you might ride away for two or three years you know five to ten it's, it's borderline genius to, yeah. to keep growing to keep scaling and there's not many businesses that can last 10 years especially in apparel you know what i mean because the trends change yeah. and you know in same as technology technology changes it's only like you know the few things in life that don't change amazon for example people are always going to want stuff to the door next day that's never going to change they they were you know their path of growth is going to last mm. probably till the, the world ends well, i don't know what could replace it up this year there you go so you know people don't understand what it takes and the hours you have to work the level of self uh, introspection you have to do you have to kind of get out your own head and see yeah. what your customer wants forget your opinion forget what you like if you want your business to go in to serve your customer beautifully it's it's really difficult and uh, going back to what you said about everyone reading books, etc., um, you gotta you gotta be mentally built for it. Not many people are, and that's why there's very few successful companies. And yeah. um, on the contrary, I do think an uh, ordinary person with no uh, skill, uh, uh, me and you, I guess, it shows it can be done. You've just got to be obsessed and curious. Yeah, definitely. Next question is from Alperin, and he says, "Where do you guys see yourself in five years? Five years, long time." Yeah, I guess. Well, we're while well, we're approaching the time. See, for, for me, I mean, we're approaching the time where you know, it's, it, kids, right? Mm. We're approaching the life where the, the time in your life where you know, kids are on kids are on the agenda. I mean, I'm 28, so yeah, kids are on the agenda. You know, within the next five years for sure. Um, and again, see, keep speaking to people on the podcast. See what opportunities arrive. Continue to invest in the stock market. If I can get at least a 20 percent compounded interest over the next over the next five years, then you'll yeah, be a trillionaire. Yeah, I'll be I'll be happy. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, continue investing in the stock market. Look for opportunity. Uh, I'm not interested at this moment in time in starting up a, a company. I don't I don't see the need. I don't see in terms of a, a, a new company like a new gym or anything. I don't see the point. I'll, I'll, I'd rather invest in other people. Mm-hmm. So, if anyone anyone out there has got anything good, then come to me and Reese. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking good. Uh, Big time growth. Uh, message us on LinkedIn. Uh, but now I'm looking for people to invest in for sure and and just spread the wings a bit. I don't really need to get back in the trenches no, in that sense. No, um, especially in, in the thought of the next five years. And we spot opportunity, as you said earlier, quite well. So I'd love to invest in, in the new people and get there, give them a little bit of guidance and just, you know, basically say, you keep doing what you're doing. And as you said earlier, inv- invest more stocks. The simple stuff, but people don't know that until it's too late, right? So... Yeah, yeah, and it seems simple in hindsight. Everything I know, I know, I know. We've it's got not, yeah. but we've got loads of other tricks up our sleeve, mind you. Yeah, yeah, of course, but of of course, and you know, the the most of the trick is just logic and seeing things clearly. That's yeah. and that sounds simple too, but it's not seeing things with pure clarity. Um, and looking at what the, the the person who founded the company is good at, and just trying to exploit that more. Like, if you're good at creative, let's let's really pin down on your creativity and take it to the next level. If you're good at making you know a product, or you're good at making images, or whatever it is your company is, let's just hone in on that and let's, let's elevate it take the shit off of you that you don't really know or don't want to do mm. everyone as a founder has stuff that they don't want to do right Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah and that's where you have to employ to your weaknesses just employ to your weaknesses get the best people for the job and boom sorry as you were saying five years um well yeah i guess we're in different situations you're liquid i'm not in the, in, in that aspect so for me uh i was saying this actually i had a call this morning i was like um as much as businesses the business has grown and there's other businesses that have grown. There's way more businesses that are suffering. And the the headwind in the last three or four years has been heavy, especially in fashion, for example. Uh, many people want to start fashion businesses, of course, more competition, more people taking sales, X, Y, and Z. So it's been a real challenge, to be honest. And then you've got poor exchange rates just because of the yeah. uncertainty in the world. Um, you've got COVID and as well, while COVID had, has had moved revenue to 
online channels obviously the, the counter to that is that people have been stuck in their house so as far as women's wear and men's wear are concerned men and women shop very differently women are more spontaneous shoppers typically mm. and men just wear the same gear which is lying around the house especially in lockdown where there's nowhere to go so as far as you know mdv is concerned i feel like i i want to i want to go into it a, a tailwind i want to you know when the shipping situation sorted out hopefully sooner rather than later the fx is in a good position i hate to say it but when you know the businesses that are, are funded by debt and just taking market share and they're never going to be profitable kind of get out of the way and then it's full steam ahead and i think 2022 is m most likely to be that situation when everything's just a bit more Sim, uh, a bit more settled um, and then have a, like a tour free run at that and see where I can take it you yeah. know I, I think I can take it pretty far and then and then after that who knows but uh, and the same aspect as you when you're approaching 30 I'm 29 now of course life changes you know in your 20s um, I say you need to work like a slave you know again it's, it's a difficult one because that's where you can get the most growth because you've got the least responsibility but that's yeah. where you also want to have the most fun yeah. so it's a it's a Ying and the yang, so to speak, but I think you need to work really hard. And then when you're in your 30s, again, you're still very young in, in the business and in life, but you've got to be thinking about, okay, kids, you know, because especially as, you know, I guess it's a, a bit unfair for women because of their biological clock, but, you know, kids is on most people's radar at 30. So, yes, settling a family, how does that dynamic change? Because when you've got a kid, that's all that matters, you know yeah. what I mean? And um, so I really want to just kind of push push the next three or four years with no responsibility so to speak as far as family is concerned and, and put like a, a fam uh, kids etc and then spend most of my time with with the kids with the family etc so I call that 33 hopefully everything's done and dusted and then I guess similar situation to you where's the ne next obsession mm -hmm. don't know yet mm -hmm. um, I know there will be something it won't be in fashion I don't think but yeah. there will be something and then how do I become in that 1% again and I know what that takes and I don't need to do and, and, and as you do so yeah that's that's the um, plan okay Ollie Hansen again on Twitter he says if you had to start from nothing let's say you had 500 pound a month disposable income how would you invest slash grow that money there's various options right mm. easy for us to say start a business because we could start a business with 500 pound so again, you could start an e-commerce. You could start. You got a few options, right? You got to start an e-commerce company. Inve you can invest it into the stock market. You know, you can have sixty percent safe, forty percent YOLO. Because mm. realistically, though, you need to be making money pretty fast. fast. Yeah. So, and there has been, a, you know, you got your your, your your bitcoins. You've got all your revolt coins that have made a hell of a lot of money this year. Yeah. Um, so I would say, like, you know. Five hundred pound a month. Like you need to be risking it, really. You need to kind of. No, but when I say risk, I'm talking calculated risk. Like do your research in a market that is undervalued, or it's two or three years away from hitting it big time. Like you kind of need to get grasped that early. I'm not saying like oh just just you know chuck it on red and see what happens. You need to be making some type of strategic decision around your actual investment. But on five hundred pound a month, you need to be making money fast. So I, I guess fast in the aspect to make it compound fast. Yes. Yeah. Because correct. You, once you get to fifty grand, those ten percent gains move the needle. Like yeah. you talked about putting a trade on this morning, it, only two percent, but two percent of your money yeah, is, yeah. is still a lot. Whereas two percent and five hundred quid, it's a McDonald's. It's a, it's a big match. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And mm -hmm. that's what you mean by fast I assume. Absolutely. Well, everyone can everyone can be a millionaire in their lifetime. Easy, right? yeah. 100 percent i don't know what i don't know what the it's probably 400 pound a month right if you compound that for 50 years you're easily going to be a, a millionaire at a 10 percent just in the s p 500 mm -hmm. but the thing is so every so you have to judge your life like how long do you think you'll live the average let's say lifespan 75 years right or eight years like you need to kind of then reverse engineer every time you put an extra 500 pound a month in you've just half the time yeah. 500 pound a month 1,500 pound a month every month you've half the time again so you need to find a way to make money as fast as possible in in them monthly compound instances so as you said which you just need to try and make capital as, as fast as you can I would find I'm, I'm starting an e-commerce company. Yeah, I would roll the dice too. I mean, I, I would fail. If you've got £500 a month, I'd be willing to lose £500 every single month yep. to get that one break. Yep. Um, I think, you know, people will say to, to me or you for argument's sake, they'll say, oh, you've you've got money, so it's, it's easy for you. Or, But when you've got no money, it's, you've got no risk. You can lose a thousand pound. Let's say, what's the average uh, 
net income from it? Fifteen hundred pounds, sixteen hundred pounds. Yeah, pound? probably. You could spin that as long as you haven't got kids. I understand. If you're just you know living at home, you could roll the dice every single month until one hits. You know what I mean? Whereas if you've got millions of pounds, it's very likely you've got a lot of responsibility, whether that's staff, whether that's family reliant on you. You can't just roll the dice. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think with five hundred pound a month, there's no one answer. That's for sure. E-commerce is a no-brainer. There's so everybody knows Alibaba or AliExpress. Buy stuff at cheap. Buy low, sell high. It's, it's simple. Dropship. Um, yeah, it's very simple. The product is the difference, and that comes from that individual skill set to understand. Okay, let's just say iPhone wires for argument's sake. There's there's loads of them on mm. Amazon. If you're gonna drop shit, um, uh, iPhone wires this is not gonna work because mm. Amazon, the top Amazon seller is already cleaning up on that. What is available on to buy from China low? What is not on Amazon? There's your gap. Do you know what I mean? You find those gaps, find those blue oceans where you're not competing with anyone. And that's how you grow. Most people do what's cool. And what's cool is normally a very red ocean. Red ocean meaning too much competition. Yeah. You see now everybody wants an activewear brand, um, a fashion company, because it seems cool. But you deal it, you're competing against Gymshark. In fashion, you're competing against MDV. And there's a few other people who are really good at what they do. So how are you telling them? You've got to look at them and ask yourself, how are you going to top them? You've got to come with something special. Mm. Um, so, in short, there's no easy answer to the question, but roll the dice um, until you get a decent sized capital. Then, t then limit your risk. And you said sixty forty, whatever it could be, eighty twenty. Could do you even know be I mean? more eighty twenty. Yeah. At the end of the day, one hundred percent just yolo it. Like you said, five hundred pound a month is is not a lot of risk. Obviously, you might be sat on the other end hearing, "Well, five hundred pound a month is five hundred pound a month is all I've got." Well, you need to you need to find a way to make more money then by by just working more. Yeah, one hundred percent, and and. It's, it's, it is easy to earn an extra thousand pound a month. You can do that just from labor. Yeah. Labor is obviously the lowest um, term of uh, making money, of yeah. course, just physical labor. Obviously, you want to uh, leverage it with skill. Um, but there's so many skills you could learn. I, I, I hear people talk about marketing, and there's a lot of people now who are like, um, what's the word? Um, consultants, right? <laughs> and some of these consultants are making a killing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes I listen just from afar to see what these consultants are advising people on. And some of the terminology they use is just basic stuff, but it blows people's mind. And if you just go, okay, be a specialist in Facebook ads, for argument's sake, or any form of ads or branding, if you study and find those five books and say, say to yourself, I'm going to be a specialist in those things, you'll be a consultant and I guarantee you make a thousand pound extra a month. And that's what it comes down to, uh, specialized knowledge and being a, b being one of very few that can do what you can do. And most of the information is available online. So 500 pound investing, it actually may be even wiser to use that 500 pound and go and, go and learn from experts of how you can become an expert too and then sell your time for a high value money and then decide to start a business. So that could be a reverse of yeah. the question effectively. Yeah. Uh, right, then another one from Twitter. Hey, okay, what do you think of the new Apple ISO, ISO, iOS 14 update and the impact it's going to have on FB ads? Yeah, again, that's another situation we've been facing in, in 2021. Um, for those that don't know, Facebook and Apple are having a little bit of beef. Um, Apple want people to know that Facebook are tracking them, so there's a prompt that says, allow app to track naturally everyone's like will be like i don't want to be tracked i want my privacy which let's keep it real no one's yeah. really private this day no. and age um so it's, it's a bit counterproductive but anyway um that will stop facebook from surfing prime ads to you based on your shopping habits because the app can't track you so in short you can't show your ads to as many people as you once was or it doesn't have enough data to be able to serve it to people who look like your customers so that's has the um, obviously has an adverse effect on ads. So for small businesses who don't have much budget, they can't spend enough to make Facebook learn fast enough, hence why they get a very poor return. Yeah. For bigger bus businesses, it's still a detrimental because your the app's not learning as fast. You can't reach as much people and your ROAS is poorer. If the ROAS is poor, you can't spend more and you reach less people. Naturally, growth will slow. Um, so it will have an adverse effect. Uh, one thing I will say is that the best always adapt. So um, people, I see people on Twitter whining about it, this, that, and the other. But if you've got all your eggs in your basket, that's your only, you know, skill in your artillery, then that's your fault anyway. So Facts. the best will the best will adapt. Um, but naturally, there's going to be a, a period where people will find out, okay, where do we take this budget and where do we put it next to grow? And they're always something. I think, you know, 
five years ago or ten years ago, SEO was the thing. If you didn't do SEO, mm. you, you were, it's the biggest scam in history. Yeah, <laughs> when you were starting, Facebook pages was huge. The growth yeah. was crazy, and they yeah. killed it. Yeah. And everything gets nerfed if we're talking in gaming. Where everything gets nerfed, and there's always something else. So you just have to be patient, keep your eyes open, and find that next area of growth. But uh, in life, if you rely on one thing too much, you're going to lose eventually. Yeah, definitely. I still think Facebook will adapt, though, for sure. I think they'll be using maybe keyword, maybe keywords that people are typing or something to track, or, or they'll be using some type of data for sure. That they've probably already got it sussed out. But I imagine maybe a, a Q2 or Q3, maybe it'll slip a little bit, stop price if anyone's invested. But I, I think in the, in the long term. It's going to have a massive effect. Uh, uh, they, I mean, they're going to come back and, and they're, they're so cash cash rich. They'll yeah, find a way. What a, comp- what a company. I mean, Robert Reynolds, I've had him on the podcast before. He's just done a, a summary over on eToro. Okay. Uh, and he's got the share price doubling over the next, I think it was like four or five years. Is yeah. Less. No doubt. It's, it's Facebook, Facebook can't be stopped. Facebook, Amazon, Google. I mean, not everything lasts, but those companies will probably be around until the world ends. Bottom line, do you know what I mean? So, Potentially, yeah. Yeah. Um, They'll find a solution. I mean, I spoke to my account manager and they said there'll be something in Q3. Who knows? I don't know what they're going to do. But um, ultimately, I think Facebook was so good. Like anybody could insert money, insert their customer data. Facebook would find lookalikes of your customer Mm -hmm. and did all the work for you. So now you'll see how good people really are because they may have to manually extract their data and find those pockets in the software before Facebook did it for you. So look, there's always a solution. But could Facebook, Facebook for argument's sake, let's say they think it's going to have a 40% impact. Could they add an extra 40% onto the reach of of people's ads, however they do it, you know, even more broadly? They could counteract it in the short term, right? They don't want people to full spend, so they're going to do something. Of course, yeah, 100%. So, well, let's just see on that. Uh, Again on Twitter, so, oh no, I've already asked that one. So uh, this is from Zion. He says, will MDV ever accept any crypto? Yeah, why not? I mean, uh, Ethereum the, is the transactional one and Ethereum's rocketing and, uh, and rightfully so. I have quite a lot of it myself. Um, so yeah, when the time's right, I think it's, you know, obviously everyone's talking about crypto, but realistically it's a baby. It's, yeah. it's early days and, you know, there might be like, you know, uh, the internet generation may be aware of it, but there's still a lot of, like my parents don't understand it. I'm sure yours don't too. And that's, there's a lot of people probably 40 onwards who have never even heard of it, to be honest. I mean, they might have picked it up on like a Facebook news feed, but they don't truly understand it. Yeah. And until that, which is a huge part of the population, huge, huge part of the economy, until they start getting in, into it, it's, it's still early days. Of course, Tesla have started to, to accept it, but that makes sense. Elon yeah. Musk is a tech guy, isn't he? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, one day for sure. Uh, da, 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 da. This is from Marta. As an, as entrepreneurs, what are the three main soft skills you look for when deciding who to hire, and why do you think these are the most valuable? Curiosity. Yeah, curiosity, communication, and uh, uh, punctuation. Maybe like actually punctuality. Turn up on time. Oh, yeah, I guess they're soft, right? I'm talking. Yeah, yeah, we're talking soft. soft. Yeah, you true. I just a willingness to learn. Honestly, like, I don't care what university you went to, where you've worked. If I, if I can look you in your face and I can see this person's got some fire in them, I give them a chance. It doesn't always work, but mm. it's, just that, it's just that curiosity, wanting to get better, forget the money, forget where you work. If you really want to get to the top, you find a way. There's nothing that can, I, always, I genuinely believe there's nothing that can hold down a person who really wants it. They'll find a way. And that's what you want on your team. Absolutely. And those people end up leaving and doing their own thing anyway. But that's great, do you know what I mean? So Yeah. So yeah. It, like you say, if you can get those people on board and you can try and, you know, prevent them from leaving, you know, even better. But these people that, that if you employ the right people, that their aim really is gonna be to leave. If if, if that would be mine. If I work for a company, I'll be trying to learn every single thing I could off the bus and that's it, I'm gone. Bouncing. We, we you say that, but people don't actually do that. Yeah, because so. most yeah most people don't want the risk. A lot of risk comes with mm. that trying to do your own thing, right? And that's absolutely fine. As you said, best the best thing to be with people is their num- someone's number two. Mm, that's so true. Just work, we'll just work up for that. Uh, your positive news, he says, the thought process behind selling and valuing his ebook, the Facebook ad a blueprint, and will there be even more blueprints drops? Uh, yeah, I think so. I need to get my head round what Facebook's going to do first and foremost. There's no <laughs> point in me trying to give advice of something yeah. that I I don't know right now. I'm learning on, on the go effectively. But when a, when the Facebook ad 
blueprint dropped. I didn't know everything, but I knew it to a strong level. I knew how to get the best out of it for the, the majority of people. And obviously the feedback was really good from that. So yeah, I would definitely drop a new one once it's all resolved. But uh, you ca I can't be really preaching advice if I don't know myself. So is the Facebook ad blueprint void <laughs> now? Nah. Is it now nah. void? Well, yeah, it's not for sale anymore. But is um, it, but does the content, does, does it still work? I still follow the exact same processes. Right. It just doesn't work as effectively. Okay. Do you know okay. what I mean? Because yeah. um, like I said, the look like audiences are weak now, whereas before Facebook did half the work and all you needed to really do is I think the start of the book by the fundamentals of business. And I basically said, if you do not have X, Y, and Z, mm. it doesn't matter what I tell you, it's not going mm. to work. If you've got X, Y, and Z, this will definitely enhance what you have. So it was a, it was a, it was a funnel structure, um, understanding the funnel structure. And there's a few tips and tricks along the way of like um, using, you know, like for example, on Instagram, you can use your best engaged post and boost that. So social proof is a huge thing. Right. If you see an image, with, you've seen an image with 10K likes, or you've seen an image with 100 likes, instantly you're going to look at, oh, why 10,000 people like this? And you're going to look naturally more, even if it's subconscious. So yeah. there was tips like, okay, use your best content, put it in the right places. People are going to look twice because it's already naturally organic and great. Yeah. So yeah, there was, there was it, it definitely still works, but um, it's just not as effective as no more. So hopefully I can give the new <laughs> tricks when it comes out. Oh, double bubble on the money, yeah? <laughs> I hope you're giving these people a discount who we've bought before. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of so course. How, did, well, how did you put your value on it? Because I know some people say, oh, that's, that was too much money, but in my oh, opinion, okay. obviously very far from that. Um, I think there's very few people who, at this level in terms of turnover, are still heavily involved, or if not do all of the ads, understand all the yeah. inner nitty gritty uh um, nitty gritties of the of the platform, so it was just it was uh, based on my skill set within that platform and the the results that I have got factually. So a lot of people say that ad experts this that and the other, but they've never owned a business or the the business is in negative equity. That's not the case. So yeah. it's the trust actually. That's what it comes down to. People trust in what I say, and if I say buy this, it's five hundred quid or a thousand pound. I would like to think the core of my audience who have followed me for years. No, okay, well, if he says something, he means it and it's going to work. And and, I, and that's what I stand by. You, yeah. you know, your word is everything. The moment I release something which is 500 quid and it's crap, you're not going to buy no more. I think we sold 280 and I think there was about 10 returns. Most of them came after a year after. <laughs> after scamming you? No, yeah, yeah, a year after when they've got the value from it. Right. And um, I understand COVID hit and people may have thought, I need that 500 quid back. Fine, I didn't even contest them, to be fair. It's, it's all good, I understand. Um, and also the resellers, the reselling on that book was insane. And I knew that would happen. I think I said to you, I know yeah, it's going to happen. Yeah, there's not much you can do. That's why you, you just, what can you do? Any ebook book always going to get resold. And and that's that's also a good thing. And people get mad at resellers. And yeah. I think actually they're spreading your message. People, there's some, a lot of people who never heard of it, but a reseller might message them. And, and they were grinding as well. They were hustling. And, and a good, uh, that's another economy. Like yeah, some people... That could have got some people through COVID in some aspect. Yeah. They're selling it for 20 quid and they sold 20 a day. You know what I mean? Happy days from us. That's cool with me. But then they might have actually got me some sales. Mm. There might have been some people who may have never even heard of it. But if they get a message by two or three resellers, they're like, hold on a minute. What's going on here? This must be good. Yeah. And then I might have nicked some full price sales. So look, it happens to everything in the world, whether it's high end design and there's rip offs. Those rip offs may inspire someone to buy the real thing one day. Mm. So this is what it is. It's cool. Well, let's hope that he, he uses the money wisely and he starts investing it and you know that's his little kickstart. And that was, to be fair, in the introduction of the book, I said, okay, if this book does not make you or save you the value you've paid, DM me yeah. and no one messaged me, do you know what I mean? Yeah. £500, and, and it goes back to the question we asked before, if you spend £500 and that's going to save you an error, and it's more likely to save you an error than make you money, that's, that's fine in most yeah. situations. If someone comes to you and say, Lewis, I need some advice on business, and you go there and you give them your time and you analyze their business, and you're going to go, first and foremost, you're doing this, it's hemorrhaging your money, forget making money, yeah. stop hemorrhaging it first, and that was my, my thesis, and I thought it could do both, I thought it could save you from stupid mistakes, and also make you some money, and that's how value should always be um, dictated. Yeah. If someone asks me for an hour of my time consultancy, it's going to be £20,000, because I know straight away, I can see you're doing this wrong. I'm going to save it you 100%. And then hopefully I can give you some mentality or some tricks, so to speak, which is going to make you much more. So the best people in the world have crazy prices for, for a reason mm. because their trust, their skill set, their accolades, 
and they can they can stop you making really bad mistakes. True. Yeah, I like the trust part as well. I was gonna, I was gonna add that at the end, but you threw it in there anyway. Because, like you say, you, there's a lot of people that are selling absolute shit to people, and I know that you wouldn't do that. So any price is a good price because you know it's being, leg- it's gonna be legit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So daily habits. I'm oh, sorry. This is from uh, Latita Hudson, and this is daily habits and rituals that help set you up for the day. I can't say there's any special. I think I think a lot of people ask people who are deemed successful what do you do in the morning as if yeah. that's going to make the difference i yeah. mean my, my my morning is wake up and have a coffee yeah um nothing special i don't meditate i've recently started going back to the gym you may have more habits than me actually but mine is typically you know wake up and have a coffee mm. um obviously i travel to manchester every week which is an early wake up call and it, I do the same thing all the time, but nothing special, basically. Yeah. What about you? Just as in the morning, that just that this is just he's just talking in the morning rituals here. Obviously, yeah, you know, he's reading books all the time, just other things. That this is just in the morning for me in the morning. So him, I come down here, I go on this inversion table. First things first, sit in bed, have a coffee. It's usually gy- gym, like within a, within a, like an hour if I can of when I wake up because I just feel like that's the most energy for me as it gets later in the day I'm like oh, I can't really be bothered so mm. come down here I'll get on the inversion table I'll set up a, a podcast so the inversion table basically just hangs you upside down and, and uh, decompresses your spine put something on like something to do with I don't know a lot of the YouTube videos that I follow in the morning and then I'll just have my <laughs> vitamin D3 my multivitamin my omega freeze and my that's, collagen that's a, that's a pretty decent uh, routine yeah that's pretty much every morning <laughs> I, I, but but it's so easy for me to do that That doesn't, that's just doesn't even feel like a routine a habit, for me yeah. it's just such a habit I just yeah, do yeah. it anyway uh, and then yeah just and then I just go in the gym and then that's I suppose that's the morning and then I just whatever comes after that comes after that you know again I think people ask those questions sometimes asking for something special but the best thing to do is analyse your own habits and remove the inefficient ones I guarantee most people's habits involved in wake up sit in bed scrolling their phone for an hour two hours whatever first and foremost forget the good stuff get rid of the bad stuff and as I said I know about business people are always looking for rooms to grow but first of all remove the inefficiencies which are killing your bottom bottom line profit do you know what I mean then think about growing that's the same thing with everything everyone wants to add 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 remove start with removing yeah. get efficient then add um, I guess yeah one thing I missed I do sometimes not all the time so I won't class it as a habit I do wake up and read but it's normally when I'm travelling yeah. do you know what I mean so um, nah nothing special I don't force these things either if these things just don't happen they don't happen like I don't, I don't really care do you know what I mean I don't really care, care too much if I just thought oh, there's no coffee today oh. I've, I've missed having my, my multi-vits today. Like, it, it's not forced. If it doesn't happen, like, it doesn't really bother me. Like, it isn't going to make or break my success. No, it's not. So. And what will make and break anyone's success is procrastination. Yeah. Literally spending the screen time app. I, like, set an hour on Instagram max. I don't even hit it half the time. It may seem like I'm up. I'm already posting. I just disappeared. Yeah. you know what I mean? But people must spend hours and hours and hours on their phone. I think of if you s- just use those hours and hours and just to try and learn a skill, half of that time, you would probably be a genius in a decade. Mm. It's the bottom line. And you mentioned earlier about being a millionaire, but I was speaking this to, to a friend, actually. I was like, if you start work at 20, it's so easy to be a millionaire by 50. The hard part is being disciplined yeah. by doing the, do, by doing the consistent things with in terms of money habits. But and those are the only habits you need to have is the good habits of how to handle money, really, and apply yourself in the areas which profit the most effectively and like you said pretty much grow some balls and just actually do it it's the most important mm. thing he's just he's just doing something mm-hmm. something anything Lord, just get you create something just to get your foot in the door because it's so hard on the outside outside just to sit there and think what the hell do I do Lord? unless you actually got your foot in the door you've got no place to start the first step is foot in the door then you think, oh, there we go. Let's let's uh, let's go. I know why, because people don't want to be seen to fail. But failing is the, the thing you learn from most. Yeah. Um, we were lucky, you know. Our first businesses both worked. Um, you've had failed businesses since. Well, I did some I've things met, before that in terms of like drop shipping and stuff, but, but it still worked. Yeah, it still, it still, still worked. Still made a bit of money, but I've had f- failures in business, and that's how I learned. I didn't yeah. learn from keep winning. I, I want to keep winning, and after the you take the the pluses and the the minuses, it still looks like I've won that mm. year. But I've took a lot of failures, and that's how it, companies grow. They don't they don't grow naturally from just doing the same stuff. They go, oh, even Microsoft, they may think, oh, we looks like we've had a fantastic year in the stock market. But all the heads in that office will be like, but we did this wrong, we did this wrong, we did this wrong. We're going to yeah. fix the next year. Guess what you get? 
more growth. Yeah. That's as simple as that. So I think people are so scared to fail. Um, but failure is the, the best thing in the world. You just have to reverse it. And that's yeah. how you learn. Yeah. This is from uh, Michael Stringer. And he says, hey, Reese, what's your position in investing? Is it something you see value in? If so, what's your portfolio? <laughs> No portfolio right now. Actually, I'm on Ethereum. You've got but, some Ethereum, yeah. but the Ethereum is linked to um NFT right. gaming thing, which we could, I'm sure there's a question about that. So, yeah, that? someone has asked. Well, I, well, I've not screenshot it for some reason, but there was one, so I'll, I'll, we'll go on to that. Yeah, so Ethereum, really. Um, but in, in, as as you said earlier, the investing in these people, um, if you find someone who's special, and I think you and I can identify someone who's got what it takes. Yeah. Um, we won't be all perfect, but we can see the, the minerals, basically. I'll invest in them, even if the business is small. On the contrary, there's some people who have got, you know, relatively decent-sized business, and you meet them, and you're disappointed, like, how did you get here? So then there's going to be a cap to where they can go. Yeah. So I think, you know, a business is a person or people, bottom line. So find good people, and you go on your way. I, I guess you, I was an example, you saying to me, Reese, do this. You saw that you in me. You were project <laughs> <laughs> that grow well. Yeah, that's that, and that's the truth. You saw mm. something in me that I'm thinking, oh, if, I, if I push him in this direction, he can get results then. I have. But that's what I mean, easier said than done. You, you can find a lot of people that have got things that, you know, I see a lot of opportunity in people, but I know for a fact they wish, wouldn't do it. It's just a shame. Yeah. You know, it comes from a drive, you know, out of a friend, Reese, myself, you were all different but similar, but there's one thing we we can't we won't we won't allow ourselves to lose there's no way mm. any of us if me and Reese are quite similar would you say yeah different yeah. but similar if you say to us you can't if we're going to find a way there's no way we'll allow ourselves to lose and that's what you need to find if people with mm. that there's no there's no no in them they, they won't give up they'll keep going and they're curious and that's what you are probably more than us you will go down loopholes on reddit and google and youtube and find all sorts of stuff and and, and that's what you want from people that curiosity and that I can do and, and they'll never lose so if I find that in someone I don't care if they've got nothing I'll, uh, if they come to me with an idea let's do it yeah uh, right, well, sh let's just go on to the NFTs and, and stuff so so the next question is not yeah. so you, so yeah you you mentioned you got Ethereum right I love Ethereum as well I think Ethereum obviously you got Bitcoin as, as being the hedge of money but it's Ethereum different. actually has things you can do a lot of things you can do with it well yeah. Ether everyone calls it Ethereum but F, F is the actual so what have you been investing in when did you start investing in it and uh, what what's the other thing NFT yeah so it's so long story short there's a platform called So Rare. So it's um, an NFT effectively, and it's got all, well, not all the licenses, it's got an extreme amount of licenses with um, football clubs. Right. So I've seen this on Twitter, actually. Yeah, I think. It's, it's booming big time, um, but it's relatively small at the same time. So it's a Parisian company, and the owners are very, very good. Like, I follow them and see what they're up to, and they're always making updates. Anyway, long story short, they've got the licenses of the teams, and every year, each player has 111 cards, one being a unique card, so there's only one. Right. Uh, 10 being super rare, only 10, and 100 being rare. I think a unique Ronaldo went for 200 and something grand, <laughs> and there's only like 10,000 users on the platform. Yeah, so, so it's only just started. It's only just started. So what, what's amazing about that platform is that, of course, it's collectors. You can collect your favourite player, but the gaming aspect, you can use those players to compete and win rewards, and the rewards... Not football manager? <sighs> yeah, kind of, but... Um, yeah, kind of. Imagine you could do that in the future. But that's what it probably is. And the, the thing is, Ubisoft have licensed their kind of platform and their cars to, to use in their own game. Right. So, and every week there's new there's new licenses of teams, there's new players. A lot of players, so I think Anton Griezmann from, from Barcelona has got clock cards. He actually bid it on one of my cards, actually. Really? Yeah, yeah, because he wanted to buy, I think it was a, a Sane. So anyway, long story short, the cards are there. The blockchain obviously tracks how unique they are, how rare they are. Yeah. You're the only one with that card, that number. They're all numbered, etc. You can play with the cards and win rewards. I don't have the time for that, but some people are winning like Mbappe cards, which are worth 40 grand. And these people might be literally just look at all the stats of like not such superstars, build a team. You have like four or five cards in the team. It's linked to the real world match results. So let's say you have a team of a goalkeeper. The goalkeeper doesn't concede. The centre back doesn't concede and, right. and scores a header. The midfielder right. gets an assist and the striker scores. It doesn't matter what league they play in, as long as right. what their pay, what, what sorry what um a position is supposed to do, 
you get points and accumulation and there's a leaderboard. So it happens on every game week. So some people have got like players in like the Japanese league and Dutch league, but these players are performing the best in their league, put a team together and then the top three places get big, big boy rewards. Okay. And then they're winning Mbappe cards, which are worth 40 grand, literally. So who's funding the reward? The so rare? It's not even a funding because they've printed the cards, what they do, let's say they're from 111 cards, one, the unique one is definitely for sale, but the others from the super rare, there may only been five available to buy in the auction, and five are allocated for rewards. Right. So right. they're not actually paying for it, they're just giving away, right. which brings value to the to Right. The, to and, the you, and you get them give away by winning the league? Just winning the game week, right. just the week. Just the week, week yeah. every week. So, but, so, how, so if I signed up right now, how do I originally, how do I get cards? Do I have yep. to pay to get cards? There's, There's no a, way of getting it for free straight away. You get like you, you get given some cards, but they're not worth anything, which right. you can just enter, but you're not going to win anything. So right. yeah, you have to pay. But again, like I said before, people may look at the platform and go, "Oh well, people with money are going to outbid me." But people with a lot of money tend to have little time, so they're not going to go into the nitty gritty of finding who's the best player in a small right. league. So right. you can have a budget of five hundred quid. Going back to that guy's question earlier, assemble a team of hundred pound per player. But the player might be performing exception in a lower league, so he's not got all eyes on right, it. Right, so it's only performance based. They don't care about the league rankings. Yeah, don't care at all. So right. you could right. outdo someone with the best players in the world. Uh, might be injured, may have a bad game, may be in bad form. So it, it's, it's they've thought about every aspect, and that's, that's why cool. I went pretty big into. I think I spent about maybe hundred grand on right. the cards. Um, risk versus reward. You said about risk. It's linked. To, it's linked to Ethereum, though. So. I'm paying in pounds, you can pay in Ethereum, but when you sell your cards, you're selling in ETH. So, right, so it's gone up quite Yeah. So, so when did you first... So how much is your portfolio worth in ETH versus what you paid for it in? in? Well, it's difficult because ETH's gone up so much. Correct. Yeah. So I think in, in pounds, it was £80, pound, £80,000 circa, which I spent, yeah. give or take. But The obviously, Ethereum price was how much at the time, buddy? 1.34? Yeah, exactly. Like so... I'm naturally getting that hedge. Yeah. So I'm seeing the platform as an amazing platform standalone. It's used by ETH and it's a natural hedge to ETH decreasing because the value of the cards through supply and demand will increase regardless. Right. Um, so it, it just seemed like a no brand to me. And obviously, I, and I know football, I haven't played it previously. So going back to you said about Football Manager, there's some Football Manager is unbelievable. Their scouting network, they can identify 18 year old who's going to be a star. More often than not, they become a star. Yeah. So because I've played that in the past and I can easily just get my head back into it, I can then go and find the superstars. It may, it may seem like a, a lot that I'm paying today, but then in five years time when the platform's growing exponentially, it may seem like a bargain. And that's a, a theory I've come mm. up with in recent times. I think everything watches, not cars, watches, investments, everything it seems expensive in the moment. Five years ago, investing in Amazon, I think, I'm not paying that. Yeah. But now you think, why didn't I pay that? Do you know what I mean? So I think getting your head around that, like if you really believe and you do your research, it may seem expensive in the moment, but it will seem like a bargain in the future. So now I'm just like, if I, if I tick all those boxes, I might seem like I'm overpaying, but most of the time it's not. I mean, there's look at watches. I mean, I've recently started to really, really, really get into watches, and some some of the watches five years ago to now, a, a twenty grand watch is hundred grand. Mm. But in the moment, people are like twenty grand for a watch. Mm. Now it's the, it's the going right, and with Instagram and, that, and these things, how obviously people's awareness of these things increases, which again increases supply and demand. So, I think that's a good thing to 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 think. Everything worth having. It's worth paying it's for, worth, yeah. But yeah, so rare. Shout out to the, to the guys. Um, I think it's going to be a big, big, big hit. Can you invest in the company? I tried. Oh, I, right, okay. I tried, but yeah. they they just finished a, f a fifty million funding right. round. Right. Um, they got back to me though and they said really? we just That's we literally good. just finished the. You should email. What was the minimum minimum investment? Two fifty k. There wasn't one, so they just finished the raise. I only, I think it, you said it came out in February. I only. No, it, it was before Feb, but it boomed in Feb twenty one. Yeah, and boomed in Feb. I think I where did, I think I found out about it from YouTube. I saw Gary V talking about it, right. and he was one of the early investors. Again, the right place, right time, knowing knowing the right people. And there's like I think Rio Ferdinand's in it, Gerard yeah, PK. Yeah. There's a few World Cup winners who are investing in it. And like I said, there's a lot of players on the platform now. So you've got too much, you've got too many aspects for it to not work. I can't see it failing. Basically, there's yeah. there's too much, there's too many. There's, there's too much cloud behind it too. With all these footballers. And they've got the licenses. You know how hard it is yeah. to get the license. Even like Pro Evolution Soccer doesn't have licenses. So what, what, why did they get trusted with licenses? 
so early? We think from their board. Right, okay. The board, they've got PSG, etc. Real Madrid, you know what I mean? They've got, they, they haven't got many teams in the English league, if any. But as soon as that hits, it's a, it's, it's a wrap. And obviously there's a lot of people who use football index, which mm. were bust, a bit dodgy. There's I think there's one over two things. So naturally you've got all that users who are, f- are seeking the new platform. Yeah. I haven't actually spoke about it too much because I want to get an early dirt and nick the cards <laughs> for the cheap. I'm sure people listening to this will have a, an interest in it moving soon which hopefully they can bid, up, bid on some of my cards and <laughs> we can make some profit but yeah I mean it, I think it's going to be a big one so what, football is the biggest sport in the world absolutely what 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 are your thoughts on this n- the new Super League that happened is it Super League they called it right? yeah I understand why the so big, can you explain what happened because I don't I kind of don't know so the, the biggest clubs in the world revenue based decided to just okay sign an agreement to go off and do their own thing because obviously they're probably thinking well without us, the league is useless, right. which is in true, which is effectively true. Was that just them or was it external? Was it someone someone with loads of money also came in? I think it was like a secret meeting. I think right, JP okay. Morgan backed it though. They yeah, were the funders. That's what I saw, yeah. Um, but I think it was maybe led by the Real Madrid president. Okay. Um, so basically he's gone to, and, and it, it does make sense in a business term. He's gone to all of the revenue drivers and said, look, we're funding X, Y, and Z without us, you know, and UEFA, FIFA, they're the, they're doing the same thing anyway. They're mm. just it's a, they they have all the money and they want to increase revenue. But anyway, they decided to break off, start this league where all the best teams play each other, which actually in theory would have been more enjoyable. May have got boring and repetitive. Who knows? It's not going to yeah. happen. But obviously, then in the contrary, going back to just pure emotion, people in the moment think, no, we've been watching the Premier League for X amount of years. We like the fact that an underdog can beat an, uh, a big dog, and I completely understand that. And but maybe it would have been better because you would have been seeing the best players week in week out. So obviously you've yeah. got twenty teams in the league, twenty five teams in the league uproaring because their revenue is going to be hit. The Premier League's revenue is going to disintegrate along with all the other leagues. So it was it was ambitious, very <laughs> ambitious. But you're, you're battling a human emotion here, yeah. and people see short term, not long term. So it was never going to work, to be honest. But, but why can't they just set up Brent? Why can't they do the same, but set up, keep it what they've got going, but set it up as like a new league, but still be in the Premier League or do friendlies? Are they not allowed to do that? Or is that defeating the objective? I think it's just time. There's just not enough. Um, right. There's not enough. They're, the players are already stretched. There's this right, league, right, this right. league. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's the biggest shutdown in history. Fair play. I'm fair play to, you know, even the, the pundits are made some very points that like Gary Neville was exceptional with what he was saying and I understand both sides to yeah. be honest I understand it from a business aspect football is business if anyone thinks otherwise it's it's just pure business now players earn so much because they generate so much bottom line uh, fans pay to see them too so um, yeah I mean it got shut down fast but would you ever consider would you ever consider moving into to uh, some type of athlete management in the future like as part of some investment I don't, do you know what I mean like if you saw a really good talent that wanted to work with you, would you consider that? I think this, this is what I said before. If the person's got the memorials and they trust what I'm saying and they can, they know what it takes, mm. then yeah. But I mean, I thought about this in the past, and but you know, and I know dealing with people is one of the hardest thing in the world. Mm. If 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 you try to make someone see, this is what you need to do to get the results. Normally, they only learn, you know, in retrospect. Yeah. You've got to get burnt to realize. I'm I'm a victim of that myself playing football. When I look back. I always worked hard, but I could have done way more. Mm. And obviously I apply that same mentality of I don't want to regret not taking the chances and opportunities I had. But I only learned that in retrospect. Many people would tell me, Reese, you're doing really well, but you can do so much more. And I was like, I'm playing hard. I'm, I'm on time. I'm training. You could have done more. I, and that's how in business I'm good because I know there's always more to be done. Mm. And you mentioned about being anxious. anxious. I'm equally as anxious. I know there's somewhere out there thinking I'm going to fucking take him. Yeah. Take him, take him. And they will. Some of these 20-year-olds, 18-year-olds, 15-year-olds are special. And we're getting older now. They may see things that we don't understand. And I need to stay in the loop. So that's my anxious as I get older. Fashion is a young man's game, bottom mm-hmm. line. I need to stay young and I need to be work harder than anyone. Unfortunately, I've got the business acumen and intelligence to kind of merge the two, which will keep me there for a little bit. But who knows how long that can um, last. But yeah, in short, I would if they had the right mentality. What about you? Nah, wouldn't manage it. I, I don't. I wouldn't. Nah, I wouldn't manage. I wouldn't manage people per se. I, I don't. What about UFC fighters? Nah, 
because you're good at spotting. You always say to me, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good at spotting fighters. Uh, yeah, you know, I like, I like obviously watching. I like to spot people like that, but I just don't think it, it, it wouldn't be right for me to say yes because I wouldn't be involved in that enough. You True. have to be fully into. True. For me to manage someone on a fight aspect would mean I would have to put you know f- almost you know eighty percent of my life at least into the fight game, and I'm not interested in doing that. You know what I mean? So I would. So I would well, the, re- say no. the reverse way of doing it now is with NFTs. I'm sure all these athletes, art, art musicians, early doors are going to have some NFT. Yeah. NFT. If you buy them, you're already involved in their journey because as it's, it's their journey grows, so does the NFT. Yeah. I saw it. Um, was it called Disaster Girl? You know, there was a meme basically, yeah, and she was a, it was a young girl, and she's like, "There's a fire in the background." And she's just like turning around, looking over her shoulder, and laughing. You know, like as is if that, what's not oh, okay. Yeah. As if she was the um, looking now. Yeah, and she sold an NFT for 500, 500k. <laughs> and I saw a watch, actually. There was a watch from Jacobs, and um, they it was the first NFT watch. You buy the NFT, and you get the watch linked to it. But that is how things are going to go now. Like, yeah. okay, I'm wearing X watch. No one knows I'm wearing X watch unless I show a picture. What if Rolex, for argument's sake, decide to go? For every, for every person who buys a watch, we're going to have a database which is available to the public. And you can see, because let's keep it real, this is a narcissistic world typically. Yeah. People buy stuff to show people they've got money most of the time. Very few people make purchases based on I like it, you like it. And no one else is going to see, but I like it. Very few people do that. Everything is normally, I think the, the social world is going to take this well, let me get it. Most car decisions aren't what they like, it's what, what's trending right now. Most watch purchases are the same. Clothes, definitely the same. People just wear what everyone else is wearing. But what if everything was linked like that. So if you want to show you've you're, you've got the most rarest painting in the world, there's your platform. Yeah. Going back to the football cards, that's why it's going to be a hit because I own, for some some of the cards, f- the first card ever on the platform, they're going to see my name. It's always going to be there unless I decide to sell. That's an ego thing, do you know what I mean? But people will want to say, I own that card because X, Y, and Z own it. Gary V owned it. This yeah, person owned yeah. it. And that's how the world's going to go. And that's why... I know I've I've not really voiced an opinion on uh, crypto and stuff, but that Ethereum and social proof is where the future's heading because we already do that yeah. just probably subconsciously. Yeah. Not. No, I totally agree. I just think that there's a lot. I think ninety percent of the yes. NFT stuff at the moment Useless. is complete bollocks. Yeah, Useless. and people need to watch out. People have. I saw someone sold of someone. So, this isn't NFT related, but someone sold a virtual. Mansion on the moon, yeah, yeah. five hundred k, five hundred k, and the guy was on Bloomberg, and they're talking about, it, they're asking questions, and he's trying to say that no. you wouldn't. It's, no, I, I couldn't no. believe what I was hearing. A lot of the art as well is just that. That is a bubble. There's no doubt yeah. about it. But then there's a guy called Beeple who's actually an incredible artist. I think someone purchased his art for sixty million dollars again. Right. But he's incredible. I never heard of him. And maybe the world wouldn't have heard of him until yes. NFTs come yeah. around. He's incredible. What he does, his vision is insane. And I guess he's like the modern day Banksy, so to speak. Yeah. So he is not a bubble. That £60 million pound will sell for 160 no doubt about it. There's crypto punks, you know that? Heard of it. The little gifts. Yeah, the gifts. Um, yeah. See, that's like, I think, in the Uniswap. middle. Uniswap. You've got, you've got the Uniswap token and you can buy redeem stuff on there. You've got this uni socks and stuff that people yeah. invest in. There's a lot that's going to be worth nothing. Yeah. But I think anything emotion-based or ego-based will work. Or if the artist is famous, it's going to grow because people want to say they own X. Um, football, sports, anything emotion-based, which is licensed, it's going to grow. Yeah. There's no doubt about it because there's only room for one football platform. Do you know what I mean? Especially, mm. and the clubs aren't going to license to multiple people. They don't even, they do one football game, FIFA. Yeah. So rare is going to be that one NFT T game and the, and the user, the space is going to grow. Um, yeah, it's it's going to work, but yeah, 90% of it's just, is going to, people are going to lo- lose money. But it's the same with everything in life. Mm. Only, maybe 95%, only 5% m- make it and only 1% stay there for 10 years. It's just the dynamic of life in all, in all aspects. Yeah. Agree. Well, we can keep going. I mean, no, let's let's let us keep everyone guessing for next time. Let's wrap it up there. Let's wrap it up there. Cool. Um, I appreciate Reese for coming. Any last words to anyone? No, I mean, um, don't do podcasts often. Lewis gets the first priority, so may only do two this year. So look forward to seeing the rest of the guys in 2022. Yeah. Hopefully, I hit the targets. If not, I might go ghost. <laughs>
<laughs> nice one, guys. Thanks for listening. I appreciate it. Please make sure to uh, obviously like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, comments down below. I do read them. Um, so, yeah, I'll speak to you on the next one.